I am Ferdinand Marcos, and I am the President of the Republic of the Philippines. I stand today on behalf of 110 million Filipinos. This is not a recovery from um, uh, back to what we were doing. And I, when people say, have you recovered? I say, recovered from what? I do not, I have no interest to be back in January, in uh, December of 2019. I want to do what's uh, going to happen next with the recognition that the economy has changed, the way we do business is the COVID changed, the recognition that essentially COVID changed everything. And so we have, we have tried to position ourselves, we have tried to adjust. And one of the issues that have come up are certainly uh, where uh, supply chains and agricultural production. This was one of the hardest lessons that we had to learn during the pandemic, when suddenly uh, the, the, we lost totally the connection between the, the source of, 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 of food to the markets. Uh, there was no transportation going on, everyone was locked down. We unfortunately had to suffer the longest lockdown aside from China. Uh, and so that, that went on for a good long while. And, <clears throat> but this, this is a lesson that we immediately learned. We said, we cannot now uh, continue to depend on importation, which is what has happened for the Philippines. In the past years, it became the easy way out. Uh, just import more, import more rice, import more corn, import more everything. And the uh, pandemic showed us that this was not a uh, wise uh, choice to have made. And so we have continued to develop our agricultural sector. Uh, and the uh, aspiration, once again, is that we are able to provide uh, sufficient supply of food at prices that people can afford. And that's still, we are not there yet, but we have made many important steps to uh, start that. Uh, we are trying to put the value chain, especially of agriculture, we're trying to put that value chain together from all the way from R&D, all the way to retail, to the market. And that's not, that there are bits and pieces of it. Uh, that uh, already exist, but they, uh, they, they do not work as, uh, as one system. And that's what we are, are trying to achieve. And we are slowly, slowly uh, making inroads into that, into that problem. And the other side of it was that we looked at the GDP of the Philippines and the, it was uh, the contribution of services as against manufacturing was uh, a little lopsided, i.e. 60%, 40%. And so we thought we need to get investment into the system so that we can beef up and build up our manufacturing capabilities. And uh, that, uh, uh, that is something that will require capital investment. And so this brings us to why we have now come here and have been going around the world uh, to not only to tout, to ask, what is it that you think you need so that the Philippines becomes an investment-friendly place? And the first things that came back were, of course, power. That there has to be, we, our, our power generation was, was not sufficient or was, it was not properly distributed. The prices were high. And the number two problem was the ease of doing business, i.e. the bureaucracy had gone a little bit out of control. Uh, and that is something that we immediately have begun to address. And so that has, that the, on the power side, we have also, at the same time, in trying to increase our supply of electricity, have to move the mix of fossil fuels to renewables. And so that's why we continue to, that's why we continue to court investment in that regard. On the ease of doing business, we have changed many of the rules, we have made, changed many of the systems, there has been actually amended legislation so that uh, the tax incentives, the, the, the tax uh, holidays, uh, the tariffs, etc., the tariff structures have all been uh, changed so that it is easier for um, our foreign investors to come in and to do business. And under under Lying all of that is a digital transformation of the bureaucracy, uh, so that ease of doing business is again um, advantaged.
uh, once we get it done thoroughly uh, through the entire bureaucratic system. So when you spoke about uh, the build better, more infrastructure program that you have, uh, and the establishment of uh, the Maralika Fund, which I know uh, the Milken Institute, together with a number of the global organisations, played a role in helping to establish. Um, could you tell us more about how you see the fund operating and whether or not it's able to, uh, in many respects, I guess, crowd in private capital into some of these investable opportunities in the Philippines? Well, the, in the investment fund was uh, quite simply another way because we were we also started to worry about borrowings although our borrowings in, in terms of as a ratio of gdp uh, are not as, it's not as high as maybe our neighboring countries uh, we are standing at about 62 point something 62.3 up to 63 percent of gdp but for us that that is high and so uh, although there have been many financing institutions like the ADB, the World Bank, uh, JICA, especially uh, Singapore, the Temasek has come in. Uh, we the, there has been these are these are essentially the summer grants, but mostly they are loans, and that uh, that affects that uh, that figure for for borrowings. Uh, so we said we need we need to invest more. And where can we get funding to invest more without increasing our borrowings? And so we looked internally and saw what are the reserves that we have that are not being, in my, my at least in our view, were not being used. I, I think we all are familiar with the concept that money cannot sit in the bank and do nothing. It must work. And so that's our way of putting it to work and uh, partnering with uh, uh, with private sector partners or even G2G partners, uh, and uh, without uh, without uh, a worrisome, worrisome increase of our of our borrowings and with a, hopefully a sufficient fund, but it will be run as a fund. It is not run by the government. Uh, it is run by professional fund managers, and that is one of the main assurances that I had to give. And that, that, but it was always that was always the concept behind it. Uh, the main uh, assurance that we had to give was that it's not going to because when the politicians get involved, uh, then then the finance the decisions are no longer uh, purely financial in nature. Uh, that causes uh, that causes failure, I think, and uh, doesn't make it an efficient uh, an efficient management of the fund. So those are those are the ways that we see it. This will go into infrastructure, into power development. Uh, again, uh, those main elements are healthcare, um, all of the areas that we have uh, uh, that we have identified as priorities. Uh, um, so the, the main the, to 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 make a list. Uh, it's really for us. It's agriculture. Um, it's energy. It's uh, uh, ease of doing business. It is also the tax structure uh, that we have to transform. I, I, I use the word transform. I don't use the word recovery because we have to transform the economy into something else, not what it was before. Well, Mr. President, I'm very grateful. Uh, unfortunately, we, we are cut for time today, uh, but very appreciative of your remarks, your comments. And I certainly know for fund managers, uh, for LPs and GPs in the audience to know that uh, you're developing an attractive framework to drive more foreign direct investment into the Philippines. Uh, is going to mean a lot of potential in the future. So thank you very much, and please uh, thank the President for joining us. Thank you all very much. So yun guys, napanood nyo po ang uh, interview ng ating mahal na Pangulo. Wow, napakagaling talaga ito ang ating Pangulo. Nabangit pa dyan guys yung kung gaano kalaga ang Marley Cavans. At talaga naman ang Pangulo, ipinapahanga na naman ang mga tao sa mundo. Alam niyo, yung ginagawa niya bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas, dapat gagayahin ng mga Pangulo ng buong mundo. Sila na mismo ang mag, uh, maghikayat para lang mamuhunan sa bansa nila. Kaya alam ko, ang Pangulong Marcos Jr., ang layunin niya lang talaga is mapaangat talaga ang ekonomiya ng bansa. But anyway guys, para sa akin, the best president sa kasaysayan ng Pilipinas kasi walang ganyan, walang bilateral meeting, walang round table meeting, yung sidelines sa sa mga Asian Summit na yan alam nyo ba yun eh 
sa mga pas administration walang ganyan, siya lang mayroong ganyan eh. So, but anyway guys, maraming salamat sa inyong panunood. Sana po sa patuloy po natin suportahan ng mahal na Pangulo, lalo sa mga Marcos Luis and supporters, walang iwanan. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like and syempre, huwag nyo uh, i-set ang ads para lalong lumago ang ating channel and uh, hit the button bell para lagi kayong updates. Maraming salamat po mga kababayan. Ingat po kayo lagi and God bless Philippines. Bye, bye, bye. Babus!